So first of all, I would like to know, you've been president of the EP for several years. Um, I just would like you to refresh my memory about uh, what was the history of uh, reorientation therapy? When did you start to hear about this, uh, this new development? And how, what can you tell me about the first reaction of the EP at that time? Uh, the, it probably started in the APA in the uh, early 1970s. And uh, at that time, the women's movement was in ascendancy and it tended to overshadow uh, the uh, gay rights issue. But the two seemed to meld as they w went on. And, uh, you know, there was a time when I couldn't tell the difference between uh, women's rights and gay rights because it, it involved the same people. The first uh, uh, time it came up, and I was a member of Consul, and this would have been, oh, 1975, because I remember that's, that's when I made the resolution. I made the resolution that uh, uh, being gay was not a mental illness. It was characterological. And it passed the Consul of Representatives. And that was the first issue that came up. I also said that uh, with that, that the APA, if it passes this re resolution, will also vote to, con to continue research that demonstrates whatever the research demonstrates. Uh, unbiased, open research it was never done. Yeah. It was never done. Uh, and the, but the, uh, resolution that I made in the council did get adopted, and by a wide margin. In that era, the Leona Tyler principle was paramount, that the APA would never take a position publicly that wasn't supported by scientific evidence, that it had to be scientifically demonstrated. And we abided, uh, the presidents in my era, abided by the Leona Tyler principle. All of a sudden, things began to change as things became more political than scientific. The Leona Tyler principle, which was never withdrawn, disappeared. In fact, you can't even find it in the annals of the APA. If I didn't have it, uh, it wouldn't exist as far as they're concerned. But no, I had no idea, none of us had any idea that we were talking about open dialogue, research, unbiased, and uh, the uh, gay rights movement in those days didn't have the kind of militancy it has now. I mean, now it's all or none. In the early years, it was more like, uh, let's, let's see what's happening. From your experience, when did you see this change of uh, direction in the APA uh, coming? It started changing pretty drastically by the late 1980s. Uh, by the mid-1990s, the Leona Tyler principle was absolutely forgotten. That political stances seemed to override any scientific uh, results. Uh, Cherry-picking results became the, the mode. And uh, the uh, a gay rights movement uh, sort of captured the APA. Yeah, it's very interesting the way it happened. The APA bent over backwards to be understanding and open. And this, it's understanding that uh, uh, it had to, uh, it left a, a, an open door for people to rush in and use it uh, for other than scientific purposes, for political purposes. It was preceded by uh, a number of issues. Uh, it, it became part of the movement for what one might call diversity. Uh, you want to bring uh, all underrepresented peoples into psychology. And this is a very lofty idea on the surface of it. But when it becomes a bias, uh, if I had to choose now, I would see a need to form an organization 
that would recruit straight white males, which are underrepresented today in the APA. Uh, what, uh, how, uh, what happened step by step so that the organization changed like this within 20 years? We developed a group of psychologists that numbered around 200 to 250 that rotated themselves through all the offices of the APA. When a rule was passed that you couldn't serve more than X number of sessions on console or on a certain uh, particular office, uh, they would rotate. They would run for another office and then come back to console. So for years, about 200 to 250 people were running the APA and they were a very select uh, inbred group. Uh, they were ultra-liberal and anything that wasn't ultra-liberal uh, was anathema. So that uh, things like uh, questioning some of the uh, statements about gay and lesbian rights uh, was not, not being accepted. It became a civil rights issue rather than a scientific issue. Now, I believe in civil rights. Uh, I was very active in helping gays be accepted in the APA. To this day, I am not opposed to gay marriage. I know I differ with North on some of these issues. But nonetheless, my position is that the person is the one who decides what they want to do with their orientation. And if somebody decides to be gay, I respect that. If somebody wants to marry a same sex, I respect that. But I also respect the right uh, to disagree. And uh, that's not allowed. Uh, you only hear one side of the issue. You, you've been president of the APA for how many years? No, I was president-elect-elect. Elect. Mm -hmm. Then I was president-elect, and then I was president, and then I was past president, okay. and then the APA got rid of me. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you were pres president uh, dur uh, during how long? I was president 78 to uh, 79 to 80. Okay. I was on the Council of APA starting in the early 70s. I was on the board of directors. Uh, in the mid-70s, I was elected uh, president-elect-elect in uh, 77. I don't know what the future is because uh, people are dropping their membership in APA. APA is shrinking. Uh, the income that they used to get from the special assessment is dried up. Uh, so the APA is going through some real changes at this point. What the future will be, uh, I, I'm not sure. But <clears throat> the clinicians, for example, are disappointed in that the APA has not done for it what it should have been doing with all the millions of dollars they were collecting all those years. What we need to do is have an open dialogue, no holds barred, and see where the research takes us. Right now, certain research does not get funded. Uh, the funding agencies cherry pick what they fund. If we have an open dialogue, we'll be much closer in the next five years to a resolution to all of this. But right now, uh, we're in turmoil. The, if anything, uh, the two sides have stiffened their positions.